conversation continues. Jimmy Wanjeki is still here with us. The proverb again, let CT remind you. The proverb again mm. in the language of Kiswahili is Adui angu kapo muinue. Mm. When the enemy falls, lift him up. Yes, you have to distinguish. Not this uh, amorphous thing that Jim was talking about, enemy friend. No, no, no. Friend of me, friend of me. Friend of me, friend of me. Friend of me. Not enemy friend. This one is enemy, enemy. Mm. Somebody who doesn't wish you well. Yes. And has demonstrated that they don't uh, mean well for you. That one. Mm. When they collapse. Resist that urge to step on their necks, okay? Yeah. Help them up. <laughs> yeah. And like Jimmy gave his interpretation of it, we have a higher calling. Just oh, he put it too well. good. He There's put, he put no it really point. Well. He put it really, really well. <laughs> I actually wrote it down. Yeah. Our greater, we have a greater purpose than mm. just being vengeful and mm. unforgiving. Oh, he put it very, very well. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Mm. So pay all the debts. <laughs> pay all that the question. debts. That mm-hmm. question. <laughs> just so we can then pick up on where we left it. Yes. You say, if you were president, the first thing that you do is say, all right, so these institutions that have the mandate, the Office of the Auditor General and the others, please investigate the veracity forensically, the, forensically mm. this debt. And if they find that the debt then has questions, what would be the next steps? The next step would be the following. Mm. That, that that is odious, because I believe they would find debt that, we, that is not legal. Mm as Kenyans. We set aside and not pay. And immediately thereafter, a public inquiry, whether you want to call it state capture, whether you want to call it public inquiry into just that, like the Bosire Commission was done mm. for Goldenberg, mm. a public inquiry with the view of prosecutory powers would be instituted to find out how we commissioned that debt, how we got that debt, what happened, who is culpable, and how we must get back any money we have paid to that illegal debt. And if that means we end up going to London for some of those cases, we do so. Because if we have paid money that is illegal, it must come back to us. Mm. If it never came to our benefit, it must come back to us. But I can assure you of one thing. Mm. With a knockoff of maybe 70 percent you are saying then that our debt servicing ratio will be about 30 percent so within our budget uh, we can afford that we can afford to pay without any new borrowings we can afford to pay all our expenditure mm-hmm. we can afford to pay any of that that that, that debt we can pay mm. and we can fund development without having to borrow from anybody okay we are strong enough mm. and we would be the biggest catalyst to what you call supply-side economics. We would then boost the private sector. Mm-hmm. Because if we are not doing any new borrowings, that means even domestic banks will have money to give the private sector. Mm-hmm. And lots of it. Lots of it. Then Jimmy. You imagine, you imagine if you are going to now borrow. Today you are borrowing at over 20%. Some banks are now even charging almost close to 30%. Yep. You imagine if you are borrowing at 5%. Uh, Mamamboga is yeah. taking a million shillings mm-hmm. loan and paying 50,000 interest because a year. That is what can they not afford? If you are talking about lo- these locals housing, how many people will not build? It will be there. That is private sector business, not government. The way you're explaining it, Jimmy, that sounds like the easier route to take. Yes. Just go establish that this is odious debt. Don't pay it. Reduce that whole burden of where you're going to get money to pay this debt. Reduce that whole conversation that you have to go around the, the globe having conversations on how you're going to be supported to then show up your economy. So why would an elected leader not do that? I mean, it's because you are made from the same cloth, you people who want to be president. No, we are not. We are not. No, 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 please, please. We are not made from the same cloth. Eh. No, no, no. First and foremost, I've never been elected to any office. Mm-hmm. I've never been elected to any office, even as an MCA. None. Why would so lead- I, am, I am fresh. Why would a leader not want to take that route? Why would no, a leader on. spend sleepless nights? I'll tell you. Why? Because this particular leader was there when this was happening. This particular leader has put at the helm 
of both the Treasury and CBK, the people who were there 10 years ago when all this began. What change agent do you have here? You don't have a change agent. That's why the impunity is continuing. He's refused to rise up to these extraordinary times, maybe for fear that it will catch up to him. Mm -hmm. Or friends, or associates, God knows. So, Jimmy, but he has refused to rise up. That's why mm -hmm. we are saying, I would have been very fresh because there's nothing here that attaches me to any of this malfeasance. And it would be very easy for me to make that decision. You would have very, found out oh, that some of your friends, very close uh, no, that friends, is, Yes, be, but there's know. 50 million Kenyans. Jimmy, you've uh, been very those friends are more important than the other 50 million. They are not. They're not. They are not. So you've been very public in your mm. assertions, right? Why has there been no public contestation of these things that you've been saying? Th that I wish you could ask them that question. That is a question I wish you could ask them. What I saw, and let me take it from the president himself is in, in his interview, is that he has admitted for the first time 70% above 70% of our revenue is going to debt. And he has said that's why he cannot lower taxes. Mm. That's why he's causing this pain. That's why he's being called Zakayo. Because of that problem. That is confirmation that we are talking the right language. Mm. We've been saying the right thing. So people must be afraid of either challenging me or bringing these facts to bear. Maybe they don't know how much more I've got if they, if they challenge me. God knows. Better ask them. Something I want to, want to understand. Yeah? Let's say this thing that doesn't look like it's going to happen with this particular government does happen and we declare, go through the process and declare odious debt. It's not as though overnight everything now will become rosy. It's not as though there won't be challenges to that declaration. What is likely to happen in countries that were in the same murky situation as us and when they declared it if there's a lived experience one can look at what then happens before you actually write yourself and now you're on a path towards uh, prosperity well, uh, let me say this i think this government has lost the initiative of that because it has been paying the audience debt yes so they have great difficulty drawing back from it but for argument's sake mm -hmm. if we were the ones who are doing it there's no doubt it would cause some shocks. Yes, some shocks in the local market, mm. some shocks in the overseas market. But the confidence I had is when we did the numbers, you can see our deficit is very small. It's about 1.2 trillion, 1.3 trillion over 10 years. If you look at our development budget, it was 6 trillion. So even if we were to say we remove development of 1.3 trillion, and we do development of 5 trillion over 10 years, we we'll still be a big catalyst to the economy. Mm. In other words, we can survive without this money. We can survive without money. Without it, without our own money. Okay. So I would, I, I, in fact, if you want to see a strengthening of the shilling, that is the way we would have gone. We would be very strong. Mm. We have been made debt dependent by people who are making money out of that debt. It's nothing to do with you and I. We money. have been made slaves, mm. and we are being enslaved. There's nothing else here. It has nothing to do with our benefit. We don't need it. Kenya is a very strong country. We don't have a revenue problem. Our problem is fraud. Fraud continually being perpetuated here. It would have and, been. You, and it is clear. It is fraud right up to even our school children. Mm. How do you have a result at KCPE? Right? Mm. That brings out saying out of every nine children that are sitting... Seven are failures. Seven are failures. Below six, below C. C and below. That after four years, all those kids, almost 700,000 of the 900,000 are failures. Mm. Are failures. What are you saying? That they are dumb? That they are not uh, getting proper education? What are you saying? On top of that, you even go to say 50,000 of them Look how painful this is. Got zero. Really? They didn't attend school? 
that somebody has got capacity to earn zero in all subjects. Or they didn't, I mean, or they didn't sit the exam. I, I, no, there is they those sat. who didn't sit. These ones sat. And they got, and they got E, which is zero. <laughs> no, really. You, you know, how, how uh, do you believe that is possible? Mm. <laughs> really? No, what are you advertising to the world? That that is the capacity of Kenya. Mm. No, this is deliberate. This is intentional. And it is tragic. It is a fraud even in itself. It cannot be. It cannot be. You know, Jimmy, the, the thing that I often find disturbing and concerning whenever we have this discussion is just one simple thing, and that is this. Huh? I've had people talk I've had people ask questions about these discussions we've had. Yes. But the thing that concerns me, it appears what we're discussing here and the rot that we keep talking about is so deeply ingrained in our people that it's like people have resigned to it. It's like this thing, which is monstrous, is what people have gone and said, it is okay, I saw if that's the way it is, then it is okay. Mm. I'm saying this because every time I'm in some discussion with some people over this matter, and they say they like the show, they like what they've heard being said, at the end of it, there is a resignation. Mm. Now, this only happens when you have been conditioned over a long period of time to a point where what you consider consistent and your reality is a state of helpless and hopelessness where you feel okay sir we've heard but anyway this is yeah, yeah yeah this 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 is where we are and part of the reason is because even as we feel pain the thing that we were not called uh, the most hopeful people on the planet i'm paraphrasing here in 2002 for nothing we roll over and find solutions. Something really terrible happens. We look, we roll over. And that process of rolling over has seems to have... Con it, du it dulls our senses. With every rolling over, it dulls our senses. Yes. My question. Do you think that the pain that you've been forecasting with regards to what a default would bring about do you think it's a sort of shock that would wake people up into realizing the harm that has actually been done? Yes, because this will be an extraordinary situation. It's not normal. And let me address um, where you're coming from. And I think it's important that we appreciate what you're saying. You see, there are different political governance models. And the one that has been sustained in Kenya has been the following. You have 60% that there's been a conscious effort to keep them thinking about food. Mm -hmm. Their stomachs. Simply just filling their stomachs and that of their families. Mm. And the only aspiration they have beyond that is to see their child coming out of their situation. So the little money they earn out of, out, outside of feeding themselves is to see their child and pray that the dream of their child is to live a better life than they have lived. Then you have the 30% who are described as the middle class. City like yourself here. Jimmy, I consider myself to be a poor person. This is <laughs> when did I no. become middle class? No. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, yes, because, 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 because <laughs> you have a salary, you have a good salary that somebody, that, 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 that Zakayo can come and take a bit of, okay? You have a situation here where that 30% is made so dependent on a particular lifestyle, whether it's a salary, whether it is loans, a mortgage for their car, this and this, that in order to maintain their kids in school, mm, they are dependent so much on their current earnings that they will never risk. They do not want to risk even applying not only their mind, their voice to situations that may change the status quo. So they are very late comers to decision making. Then you have the ruling class. And the ruling class, that 10%, is fairly comfortable with the way things are. 
After all, this has been designed for their benefit. In a sense, what William and uh, the KK crew were trying to talk about bottoms up and dynasty versus hustler versus dynasty and so on and so forth was predicated on this. The unfortunate thing is that in the practice of the last uh, 15 months of his regime, right, the bottom are suffering more than the, than the ruling class. The bottom are being squeezed, right, to oblivion. The middle class are now joining the bottom. Okay, <laughs> right? And yet the language, yet the language Was. is, oh, Nini Ambamu earn salaries, oh, you are so selfish, you don't Turkey. want to support those who don't have houses. So now it is what? Socialism? Is it socialism? That's what it is. Even socialism runs out of money. It all comes together. There's no socialism yeah. that has not run out of money. Mm. So we have a situation here where you have a very confused leadership. It doesn't quite know which way it's going, what its policy is, what its vision is. All right? Now, you tell me who rises up in this occasion and when. It takes it you saying, <laughs> you know, <laughs> even to go to work. All right? Even to put food on my table as a middle class, I, I don't have it. I don't need it. So I'm going to hit the streets. Right? Mm. And that is what happens. It becomes unbearable. It becomes unbearable. This pain that is coming will be the greatest trigger because this one will not only affect the middle class or the 60%, it will affect even the ruling elite. It will affect them. This one does not escape anybody. And that's where you start asking yourself, I'm sorry, it is a state of bankruptcy. If your manager in your company took you to bankruptcy, you would not keep him to help you recover out of it. And that is where we are headed. We will not keep a leadership that is bankrupting us. We do not have faith they will be able to take us out of it. That is as clear as it is. You and I will be on those streets. You and I. And the people that are expecting that they will be protected by certain people, those same people who are, will be on those streets. Because this will affect even them. So, Jimmy, you're saying the way things have been going, they're just going to get worse. Absolutely. And, um, uh, Eric, you know, debt default is not something that uh, is a choice. Eh? Mm. <laughs> You don't decide, okay, I'm, uh, you know, I'm not going to default. <laughs> it comes. Mm -hmm. Because you can't pay. All right? You reach a situation where... Circumstances will force you... Yes. ...to get into default. Yes. Mm -hmm. When, for example, and it's coming very soon, mm -hmm. you're unable to pay armed forces because you have to pay a debt, what would you choose? You pay your armed forces. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. <laughs> so, <laughs> this, this is where we are arriving at. Mm. So, let me say this, because we are where we are. Mm. And uh, I, I am prepared to be magnanimous. Mm. This government, before that day arrives, should declare a national crisis of debt. Should openly have a discussion about what we are going to do with this humongous debt. And I can tell you, if they open up to some of the bright minds we have in this country, I'm not saying I want to be there, I don't have to be there. Mm. It's got nothing to do with Jimmy. There are very many bright Kenyans. You open up a discussion, there may be a way out of what is coming as an impending crisis mm -hmm. to each and every one of us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But they must admit, wameshindwa. All right? You know, don't live in denial. It's the, it's the worst position to be in when you're in leadership. Don't try and kick the can. There's no more road left. Okay? Mm. Say categorically, hapa tuko na shida. Let us tell the country with how deep this problem is. Mm -hmm. And how it, the possibilities whether we go default, whether we do this, how it will affect each and every one of our lives. And let us then take a collective decision on the way forward. That is the last chance they have got, I can tell you. 
because mm. this pain we keep experiencing with more and more tax with the downfall of our businesses with the redundancies now being declared at rates that have never been seen before all right with high interest rates and people now on the brink of being declared bankrupt mm. right with a high cost of living that they cannot stop the fall of the shilling no matter how they speak oh today it's 160 plus right the g2g i can tell you is one of the biggest nightmares this government has got because they are forcing kcb to absorb the exchange rate kcb may be the one that leads us into problems the more we are talking here and i will advertise to every kenyan who is holding a bond get out of it i'll tell you here and i know in the secondary market you can't sell it get out of it that is no longer an asset it is a liability there's a funny headline i saw in the business daily today at that people with cash have made cream out of high interest rates which mm. cream which cream even if you have been given 16% or 15% your currency has depreciated by 28% you have an inflation rate of 7%. You are negative 19 even with those figures. CT I know I'm not asking you to do the sub. <laughs> Don't worry. I think that one I'm doing quick in my brain. <laughs> You're negative 19. Which cream are you making? As long as you are holding on to the shilling, we are losing value every day. So, unless we have a clear discussion, unless this government declares a crisis of this problem mm. it will hit them and will have no patience we will not listen and already this government is suffering a credibility deficit so what would arise Huge. what would arise if because this is what we're talking about the responsibility lays squarely on the shoulders of the executive yes and we say look call kenyans kind of like a mommy daddy moment to the family and say look this is it and this is how bad it is what would potentially arise from that and are we saying that kenyans would then now give their views about what we do are we having that a kenyans and the executive going to have that moment where you say okay so what do we do to get out of this thing yes what would arise from having that candid you know open conversation when you are told this is the truth of the matter uh, very good question when you when you are told the truth so you are getting away from the let me say white lies mm -hmm. of oh it's all under control okay mm -hmm. right that mm. you were talking about earlier yes you are told the truth and we are told we've got to face this truth you'll be amazed at the amount of ideas that come out of people to solve that problem mm -hmm. and if you have a working template they may not be that confident that this government can implement it mm -hmm. so people want maybe some other body to do it right mm -hmm. but if you have a working template that has got particular milestones to mm -hmm. solve this problem we may get somewhere in other words the pain may not last may not go as deep and last as long as some of us are anticipating but there'll still be consequences there will be consequences because they waited too long but the too long what you but the situation it, it yes. will be managed yes. yes it will not be as dire yes we will be able to avert certain adverse consequences yes. mm. so they need not be very adverse or yes. extremely adverse yes. they'll be adverse enough but not the extremities not the extremities yes what will be the political consequences well that is the risk one takes and the consequences may be maybe not very good for the regime mm. yes that's a risk but i can assure you it's a better risk than that default and the dire consequences because then i can show you it's a zero sum game here you see when you take it's a zero sum game when you mm. have yes. a say on the processes of change you have a say mm. you you're have, on the table you're, you're in the room you're yeah, on the you're, table you have wiggling room and you mm. can you, you you can have your say you're in control yes mm. but if a calamity befalls us and people respond who is in control now mm. it's the people you actually lose that control because now essentially you're in free fall correct very well put city outside of that what is the other option because from one extreme one extreme is then you get to that very bad situation where there's an uprising right mm. and an uprising uprisings don't end up well mostly they land up they'll be hijacked at some point by some interested parties and they control we've seen all these uprisings all, in all these countries you end up with the people who are suffering continue suffering 
Well, you've just changed mm. the people at the helm. So that's the other extreme. You see here. What's the middle here, ground? Here. What's the in between? Here, I, I, I'm not as negative as you are about that so-called uprising. Mm. You see here, there is a, a direct purpose. <laughs> right? The one thing that uh, Kenyans are understanding, that they probably did not understand even 10 years ago, is numbers and the economy. This is the topic. Mm -hmm. This is, we are prevalent. We are clear about even what the problem is. Even where maybe people ignored us when we screamed it, now it's obvious what the problem is. Mm -hmm. Now, it would have to have some clear milestones, no matter what change of leadership mm -hmm. or whatever joint leadership or formation or committee whatever it has to have milestones mm -hmm. with a time period right yeah. and if our lives are not changing you will see again change yeah. yeah these are extraordinary times for this nation and i can tell you we are so capable of rising up to it mm. we rose up to it for multipartism we mm -hmm. rose up to it for the independence of this nation to tell you the truth out of the 500 pe million people that the colonizer were, had colonized yeah. the british yeah we are the only people that had an armed struggle. All right? Mm. We had a constitution, a new one, in peacetime. Mm. We came out of our terrible 2007 violence. Kenya is a country of firsts. You'll be amazed what we can do. That's why we are such a pillar on this continent. And I'm very positive about the people of Kenya, about us. Because really, we live up to the adage, you know, Kwame Nkrumah used to say that uh, I am African, not because I'm born in Africa, but because Africa is born in me. me. Mm. <laughs> I think Kenyans are showing more and more. We are Kenya, not because we are born in Kenya, but mm. because Kenya is born in, in us. us. What you've described, Jimmy, is what I'm describing as the in-between, right? That in-between where there is some clear leadership and a clear goal towards something. So we're saying that this is what is wrong and this is what would lead us to the right thing. And before it tips over, before we just jump over the, preci uh, over the precipice, mm. we have a governed system of getting things right. Yes. The extreme is the other one where people just take up arms and they're fighting. They're ev everybody will be fighting over something. Destroying things but exactly not more everybody likely. Everybody will be yes. fighting over the same thing. Correct. Right? And that's the extreme, the anarchy. Correct. Correct. So this in-between one requires leadership. Correct. So where is that? That's why, that's why we are all talking. Mm. Well, that's you know, why we are all talking. Eric, you've articulated this thing very beautifully. Mm. Really well. You see, the consider for a moment. Huh? I am looking at the concept of lost opportunities mm. or opportunities that can be taken advantage of. All right? Mm. I like to argue sometimes when I'm being philosophical, perhaps leftistly so, and I look at a missed opportunity after 2002, when Raila was, had wanted to be prime minister, and some individual decided that prime ministership, he can go sing to the birds mm. before he got it. Mm -hmm. And I have looked at the consequences of what happened. happened. Correct. There was a beautiful opportunity there. Yes. It went south. Scondered. So we're saying we have a calamity here that has a silver lining. Yes. An opportunity where something difficult, really difficult, a decision that can be made to avert and to turn things around, but it has presented itself. Yes, it has. Amidst this tumultuous Correct. situation that we're discussing, there is an opportunity. Correct. Do you ask about the leadership? I mm -hmm. think the leadership question is answered. When you look at those who rise up to the occasion and mm. understand that this is not a call for chaos and this is not a call for revolution in the violent sense of the no, word, it is not. this is a call for when leadership stands up and says, folks, let's ensure that this is the path we follow and let's push towards this path. CT, you've articulated it very well. Very well. That is the moment we are in. And I can assure you, we are going to close ranks on this. Mm. Leadership here is going to close ranks. Now. Not tomorrow. Now. It's going to happen now. We are closing ranks. All of us. Because we can see this opportunity. We can see the crisis. Our problem, as we are not in government, 
is that you have a government that is deaf. It's deaf. A government that is still in denial. A government that is lying to its people about this crisis. And they need to take a step back and embrace this moment mm. before it engulfs them. Jimmy, when you say government, yesterday we were given a little snippet of a little reality of that term and the interpretation and understanding of it. <laughs> and state versus government. State yes, versus government. Yes, 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 yes. And government comprising yes. of the three arms. Otherwise, yes. it's not government. Yes. We have an executive that fits that bill perfectly. Yes. We have a parliament that also fits that, that bill be perfectly. perfectly. We have a judiciary that is... Somehow also, I gave you the example. Yeah. Mm. We have a judiciary that... Many everybody is always talking against the judiciary. No, no, I, I thought against. Those I am simply. Side, uh, you're saying the that they are, they are, no, they are like this. Are, yes, as prescribed, they are. Yes, the third arm of government. Yes, I, I almost hear you saying that they're, they're also looked down upon by the other two. Yes, well, they are they they they, they are bad mouths. That's the simplest way of putting it, and they're bad mouths because they make decisions that seem unpopular with those in power. But I am encouraged when I see certain decisions being made. Mm. And when you hear the consequences of those who have made those decisions, mm. it tells you they're making the right decisions. Because someone somewhere has felt that heat. Now, this is how change comes about. It, you, change isn't momentous. It, it, it isn't a deluge of water that's rushing at you. It's a drop at a time. Mm. But the change is actually happening. So the judiciary, much as we've been told, it, has been, it was the bottleneck. In the, in, the, in the Huru government, we had the bottleneck to change. I guess it was a bottleneck to the change he wanted. Correct. Yes. But, Correct. And there is there are signs. Unfortunately, I can't. I cannot, in good conscience, say the judiciary. No, no, no. Because we have just we have the magistracy, we have the uh, high, high court, we have appeal, the court of appeal, and then they, are, they, they we don't have challenges here. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Jimmy, for halting the train because where, where I was going, I was going. Uh, 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 <laughs> sounds like the, the, the you, you want to call it the savior, place. and I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I we have challenges. The I judiciary is challenges. making all sides uncomfortable with the decisions it's making. Yes, yes, it is. Jimmy is uncomfortable with the decisions that the judiciary is making. Yes. Ruto is uncomfortable with the decisions that the judiciary is making. To me, the judiciary is in a good place. It's a blue eyed boy. <laughs> I was actually. So, yes, indeed. So, my, my question in, in this here is uh, what's the role of the people? And, you know, far be it from me to have a conversation like this without the word revolution mm. uh, jumping in at some point. And if you look at the revolutions that have been successful, if, if you want to use that uh, adjective, it was one person or a group of people really not more than 50 at a time maybe in some cases 20 maybe in some cases five who were so dissatisfied with the status quo that they said we will not do this anymore in chile it was a man who said i will not pay these high fares anymore bring the whole thing to the ground in egypt in Lebanon, it was in Tunisia. We, in France, it was we will not pay this money for bread. You know, in Tun it was this. It was Sudan. Absolutely, women. It was one thing because we, we we want we want to think about it, but this colossal thing that armies of people were moving into cities. No, it was not. It was usually one person or a small group of people who said it is enough. But what got them to the enough? was that the situation actually became so bad. In Kenya today, I see a lot of the comments that are coming up here and people are saying, you know what, maybe it's not so bad. Why are we being so pessimistic? Why are we saying that? Why are we being so negative? Why are we talking about this thing as though, you know, we're going to open our eyes in the next one hour and Kenya will be in pitch darkness? You know, it's not there yet. It's not so bad. <laughs> what is not so bad? The situation. So, Economic situation. So, so my mm -hmm. question is, Jimmy, this is the question. What? then would happen and i think i asked it earlier on that would get kenya to the point on some some to the point where the realization then dawns and says you know what <laughs> this is enough and we then cannot you're not going to wait for the messiah to come in the form of another president or the current one but kenya's to say look it is enough and i i, I say that that war moment has not yet 
occurred for that shift to take place. And that's why we have the people who say, well, Jimmy, you're being alarmist and you're being too pessimistic. You're being too negative. You know, that war moment, nose to the war moment has not happened yet. Do you, uh, you've articulated uh, what we were saying earlier. Hmm. Give you the structure of Kenya. The 60% who are just worrying about food. Hmm. Food. But even if their child doesn't go to school, it's okay. It's another hand to get food. Hmm. This is a middle class problem. The middle class are where this is going to come from. They need to appreciate that they have no more hope those who are saying it's not so bad are still hanging on to a modicum of some hope. Mm. They are refusing to accept the reality of their situation. If they are going to read the business daily headline, they believe that is the greatest news. Mm. If I just had a little cash, I'd be earning huge interest rates. Mm. They don't do the numbers. That they're in actually a lost situation. Every day they are losing. And it will get to a point, and I can tell you, those who may be writing, I have at least over the last one year tried to circulate very quietly mm. to very many places. And what I found were very angry people, very broke people, mm. very broke, mm. very angry. Okay? And people without hope. You know, the worst thing is when you take away hope. Mm. So those who are saying that, Maybe they are frightened by what I'm saying. I'm not trying to be mm. an alarmist. I'm Scar trying to be very real. I'm not trying to scare crew. You're to be a no, 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 no. Mm. You know, as I was saying earlier in relation to what the government should be doing is telling the truth. Mm. Mm -hmm. When you say the truth, then you look at how to solve the problem. The greatest thing is that we are not having honest discussions about our challenges. If we articulate the truth, we will find a way out. So I can tell you, what is not hurting them today, mm. wait until default. So you're saying default, we'll be like Ghanaian saying it's okay. It's we just continue suffering. Mm. We can't move. There are many people I met who said this is even a worse time than the time of COVID. That's how they feel. Right? They cannot make ends meet. So I want to assure you, mm. just like many people used to say this during the time of multipartism, we lived through this. That the ones who are clamoring for it are rubble rousers. They are trying to destroy Kenya. We have peace, love, and unity, and we are proceeding. What is the big deal? They should be jailed. Do you know there were many people who screamed that? Mm. I remember Mwai Kibaki saying those who are screaming is trying to cut a Muguma tree with a razor blade. They are going nowhere. Multipartism came. People who never saw the end of Moi, we saw it with our eyes like this. All right? So even this is going to happen. The amazing thing, because I can tell you I've been through at least that transition. I went through the transition of Kibaki, uh, from Moi to Kibaki, from Kibaki to Uhuru, and now we've seen Uhuru to Ruto. The one thing I can tell you is that when Kibaki got in, he had goodwill of about two years. The people gave him the benefit of doubt mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. It was a good feeling. No, let's be hopeful. Okay, and then and then it broke in 2005, and that was downhill. Even though the economy was doing very well, mm -hmm. Uhuru had a lot of goodwill. Mm -hmm. Younger generation, new constitution. He was suave. They were running the show. By the time we got to 2017, in fact, 2015, the stones were flying. This regime has had the shortest honeymoon I've ever seen. Within one year, the stones were flying. So I want to tell you something. <laughs> For those who are in denial, because I think those who are saying things, are, mm, mm. those are the very few. I can tell you, I can tell you here now, the honeymoon is over. Right? The time is nigh. Mm. And they shall see it from the people of Kenya. It is coming. And I can tell you, because it's coming very soon, this default. The pain of it, do. Mm. When they come for your money in your account, because you are privileged to have an account, for those who have M-Pesa, when they start seeing their money going, when life becomes very difficult in terms of just basic movement, 
I think you see a different Kenya, and that Kenyan is here in Nairobi. Mm. Don't look for them anywhere else. So, if the leadership is not doing what needs to be done, what can the citizens do that will then, because the pain is coming to the citizen. What, Which, what can the citizen do? And there's something that you said that got me a bit concerned when you said, you know, that the leadership is, what did you, what time did you use? Not listening. No, no, no. The ones that are now coming together. That Yes. Yes. You know. They are converging. Yeah, because, yeah, there's, because there's some in, convergence of yes. thought. Yes. The convergence of thought that you're talking about, it could be of people who are fresh in thinking, those who have not participated in getting us to where we are. Correct. And those who have participated in getting us to where we Correct. are. Correct. Now, those that have participated are worried about. Mm -hmm. Because are they really interested in getting a solution? You see, the consequence for them not finding a solution are also very great. As CT said, it's better to be in the room to try and manage than be outside facing an avalanche of problems. What we are not going to do is compromise about the future of this country. And the way we compromise is by saying, uh, forget the past. Just let us find a way of forgetting about it. Allow impunity to have gotten away with it mm -hmm. and we move on. There must be an accountability and responsibility for why we are here as Kenyans. That mm. must be there. So that it informs us. Eric, you one day may want to be president of Kenya. <laughs> you must know your boundaries. In the UK the other day, you had a prime minister who quit because during the time of COVID, he was having a party. Mm. Mm. <laughs> okay, that's it. That's it. A party. Mm. He, didn't a party. Have, he didn't have huh? anyone. But he, but he was breaking the rules mm. yes, and the norms. All right? Was and it was, it was intolerable. Setting, he was setting a bad example. A bad example. That is how we should be. We are 60 years since independence. What are we debating here? Right? What kind of society have we become? What kind of country have we become? So what can we citizens do? All right. right? Yes. And, and I'm looking at that from short of becoming another dead and Kimali and the likes and going into the forest with handmade guns. Right. Because I said that is the absolute extreme for which I'm not prepared. What else can the citizens of this country do to make sure that we are shepherding this country towards the right direction? The first thing, um, I don't know whether you're talking about that now or in the future. Now. Right now, I will call for civic action. And civic action is not just civic action on the streets of Kenya. It is actions in the corridors of power. It is actions in the courts of power. It is continual action. I saw the president saying that, you know, even if the courts say they are not going to, mm. uh, they are, uh, this housing levy is not going to be there, he's still going to collect. How are you going to collect? Mm. It's an illegal tax. We must start saying we are not going to pay certain things anymore. And that discussion, Eric, eh, let us wait for another man, one month. I'll come here. Let me not speak too much because we have a lot in our minds and a lot that we are discussing about what that action will entail. What is revolutionary for this country? Hopefully, hopefully, mm. Hopefully, it will not have bloodshed. But I can assure you, there will be some pain. There may be pain to some of us, individually. Mm. All right? But we are prepared to stand up and say, we cannot continue living like this. And just like people who have fought for this country before, from the time of Mau Mau to the time of second liberation we are prepared to stand again and say this cannot continue 60 years after independence mm. so what would that mean for us you see just like the examples you've given all right when the momo were up in the bush they were saying we want to get our freedom back we want to get our land back we want to get our rights to move as we wish it means when this. they were pushing for 
the second liberation mm. was saying we want to return to multi-party democracy yes we want to have choice of yes. leaders right yes. so this time without just telling people like go out to the street and let the people see you out in the streets it it means the greatest freedom of all which is economic liberation so what so financial what? freedom mm. is the greatest freedom on earth it gives you the greatest independence and right now what we have is slavery it is the one that is taking away all our rights all our hopes all our possibilities all our aspirations it is called economic liberation that economic liberation means that you will earn your sweat you will benefit from your sweat you will grow from your sweat mm. and it will not be taken away from you you will not be disenfranchised you will not be working like a slave it is the greatest liberation and that is the one that has eluded us for 60 years because we have been through other liberations this now is the last one and this one will be earth changing it means then that our goals for what you call middle income our goals for a rich nation are then possible our goals where no kenyan is ever worrying about food mm. are possible where no kenyan is ever worrying about a job are possible where we have a country here right that is like any other first world country in the world that is possible this is the pain that we have to go through Jimmy thank you for joining us today Asante sana and happy new year and happy new year to you all hope to next time here. we invite you will not be coming here to talk about no pesa yangu imeenda Asante sana kuna pesa kwa account na imeenda thank you for tuning in to Kenya's biggest thank conversation you very much. this is the situation room the only way to start your day